We got some football teams in the audience, so we'll welcome up three football players. Ethan Wolf from Minster with the Tennessee Titans now. Matt Barr from Kent State from Kenton High School. And Joe Horn from Waynesfield Goshen and Ashland. And now the Tiffin University football coach. So have a seat, guys. Give him a hand. It's good. It's good. Also wanted to mention Stephanie Sanders is, is uh, featured, a full-page feature in our FCA magazine this past month. I tweeted out a link uh, a couple weeks ago, but you can go to fca.org and then scroll down to the magazine area, and there's a nice question-answer session with her. So three football guys, th three different levels. We got college still, Kent State. Are you, is this your last year? Yeah. Okay. We have Matt every year. And so I just wanted to check. Joe Horn, out of playing for, for a few years, out of track and field a long time. <laughs> He's now coaching at Tiffin University and Ethan Wolf uh, with the Tennessee Titans right now. So let's start with you, Matt. You can grab the microphone there. Uh, big missions trip last summer, and then you were part of the MAC Leadership Council again this year. Um, getting into your senior season, what, what's God been doing in your life? Um, God's been playing a big role in my life right now. You know, you're getting ready to be done with college football, which for the last four years has been consumed it basically so you're looking for that next step um being a lot of prayer with him talking about where you're going to go uh this last season was a tough one got hurt so was really relying on him to come back for the senior year and be ready to roll he was with me through spring ball and all these summer workouts we've been going through so just an exciting time right now fully healthy you ready to go yeah fully healthy uh had surgery on my knee but it's all good ready to roll uh we're excited for opener against illinois coming up first game of the year so really excited now when does camp start back up august 4th we'll be rolling Okay. One of the old guys on, on, the, on the staff. What's it like when, you know, these freshmen come in? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a change. Uh, you can see it in high school a little bit because you've got guys that you grew up with, but in college it's even more different. I'm a 23-year-old fifth year with guys that are 17, 18 coming in as freshmen. It's funny, one of the freshmen this year, his older brother was a senior when I was a freshman, and now I'm the senior. So just trying to change the role when I was younger, I was definitely someone that followed everybody, and now you're in a leadership role. Uh, you make captain and you have to try and be the guy that people can look up to. So it was cool over 4th of July. Uh, three guys from that lived down south didn't have anywhere to go. So I was like, hey guys, just pile up in the car. Let's go back to Kenton. Mom cooked a bunch of food, had a great time. Those guys just got to see where I come from and I got to learn a little bit more about them. And that's really a cool part where you get to open up your life and embrace that leadership role. Joe Horn, does that bring back some memories, that, those college days? Yeah, that's getting farther and farther away. But yeah, that's, I mean, you know, I'd lo love to go back and be in his shoes and uh, in Ethan's shoes and be back on the football field, but I don't think my body could handle it anymore. <laughs> state champion, we, we talk about every year on the track broadcast. Joe helps us with the, the state track and field broadcast both Friday and Saturday down at Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium. Uh, but do you think back on that, your senior year in high school, uh, those are special memories still that, that resonate when you won four gold medals, like led Waynesfield Goshen to their first state title as a team. Well, that's why I like coming back to all those things. We get to talk about all those good times that, <laughs> that uh, you know, that we had. But, uh, you know, when you get to this point in your life, it's really cool to see how God worked through, through your life, through all those experiences, and, and how he brought, used that to bring you to where he wanted you to be. And um, I think that's at this point in my life where I take, take away the most. All, the, all that stuff was fun and winning the championships and, and the team championships. But uh, just seeing how that God used that in my life to give me a platform to talk to other people, um, to you know, direct me uh, where I was going to go to college, where I was going to end up after that, and where I am coaching now, I, I think that's, that's really the cool part to the whole thing. Ethan, you're, you're kind of in flux right now. You're on the Tennessee Titans roster, but uh, we, we've had guys here before. The, Joe was a member of the Indianapolis Colts for a little bit there as yeah. well. You, you're on the roster. Uh -huh. Camp's coming up. Just how you feeling? What's this feel like? Uh, you know, it's just the last six months of my life really have just been ambiguous. You know, not really knowing where I'm going to be, what I'm, what I'm going to be doing. So, uh, you know, you just trust the plan that, that is already set for you. Do everything that you can do. Um, just worry about being, you know, <clears throat> they talked about it earlier, just being the best player that you can be, and uh, things are going to work out. Uh, so far, you know, things have worked out in a, in a fashion that, you know, I feel like Nashville's the place I'm supposed to be just by some of the things that have happened. But, you know, it, it's a it's a great time being there, and, you know, I get another chance to play football that, you know, it, it, it doesn't stick around forever. So I'm, you know, I'm extremely thankful to be, you know, still with, given the opportunity to play. What are some of those things that, that pointed to that for you? Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, just I... You know, I you go and you train after you graduate for what's going on, and and I was going to train in Nashville, and I ended up getting an apartment with one of my friends that 
the day that I needed to move there was the day that one of his roommates had to move out for a job. So I was like, well, I guess that works out. And then, uh, you know, I ended up signing with the Titans. I didn't know when I went there to train that that, that was where I was going to be. And, you know, my apartment lease and all this stuff's gone. You know, it's going for a while, and it just so happens, you know, I stuck there. Um, you know, I met some people in Nashville that, uh, you know, that, that I didn't know were there all the time, and, and, and they, they really have helped me, uh, you know, get accustomed to the lifestyle and, uh, you know, keep in touch with our faith together as a group. And, you know, the people that I worked out with, they're big, big faith-based people. And, you know, it really, uh, you know, kept my head on straight and, and uh, you know, we just worked hard together, so. Certainly came from a faith background in Minster, yeah. uh, church family Absolutely. for sure. But then what changed or, or how did you grow in college through that? Um, you, you know, college, when I got to college, we, uh, we had a team, we called it our team chaplain. His name was Tim Miller and he was a, awesome, awesome guy, and, and he was always around, and, and I got I got involved with him early on uh, in my college career, and, and, you know, there was a lot of ups and downs in college, I'm sure that everybody that has played college sports, you know, it, it's not all it's not all fun. So, uh, you know, he really helped in times of, you know, where things were hard, if you're questioning uh, anything, and, and he was always a phone call away, and no matter when, where he was, he would always answer the phone, and, and then, you know, obviously his, his church that he preached at was right down the Right down the road, and and went there every Sunday, and he'd have us over for meals. So that was, you know, a big a big thing in my college yeah. experience. Joe, what made you want to become a coach? Well, I mean, I, I think the biggest reason would be my family. Um, I, that's always been in the back of my mind ever since growing up uh, was coaching. Um, my grandpa did it, my great grandpa did it, um, and in all sports, you know. So that's always been a passion of mine. It's something I've always enjoyed doing. That's I think when. Uh, for me, the natural conclusion of my athletic career, being able to be around it still and uh, take everything that I learned and uh, pass it on to the next generation of athletes, I think is is um, something that I really enjoy doing, and I, I feel like I got got talents to do that. So, certainly, it's long days, it's long weeks, it's not a lot of time off. But w what's one or two things you can point to that says this is what maybe I didn't expect and I really enjoy about it, or I thought this would be you know really fulfilling to me, and it is. Well, I, I think the biggest surprise to me is. Um, the bonds that I share with my athletes, I, I, mean, I knew I was going to get you know, connected with my guys and stuff like that, but um, I mean, they're, they're my kids. I mean, they're, they're my family. Uh, I do anything for them, and uh, so it's, it's really enjoyable to go to work every single day because I get, get to see my family, get to see my brothers out there. So um, that's probably the biggest, I don't want to say it was a surprise, but it just some, my favorite part about the whole thing is, is the family I get to be around, watching them grow, and then, shoot, after four years, they, get, they have to go on to you know, live their lives. But, uh, yeah, and then you get a whole new batch of, of family members, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Family grows every year. Absolutely. Stay in touch with those other guys. Coaches are very important to FCA. They're very important to us. We have, I think, eight coaches groups. Steve does a couple right now in Spencerville and St. Mary's, always looking to expand those. So if you're a coach of, of any level, uh, we, we're all over the place, Columbus Grove, Lincoln View, Van Wert, Lima, um, down in the MAC as well. We would love to have you be a part of it because we want to build into coaches. Coaching's a hard life. You know, you see the glitz and glamour on TV uh, of the, the big time coaches, uh, but there's a lot of coaches that are working a lot of hours and, and are lonely a lot of times or have a lot of struggles you don't think about. So we're here for you uh, as coaches. Feel free to talk to me or Steve afterwards about that. Matt, is there a, a coach that stands out? You've played for some great ones that has really made a difference in your life. Yeah, I mean, I've had been really blessed with some great coaches, not only at the college level, but in high school and stuff. Uh, my dad's always been probably my biggest coach, a uh, guy that just did everything to help me from T ball the way up. But uh, then Mike Mock, probably um, at Kenton, uh, he really emphasized not only being a great player, but being a great student, a uh, great athlete, and then also being a great man of integrity and of faith. Uh, you're not supposed to bring that all the time into the school atmosphere, but he always did. I knew he was a guy that could go into his office. I was struggling. I remember when I was making my college decision, he took me in, he prayed with me about it. Uh, and those are things that just stick out in your mind. Like when you're going back, um, you lean on those things. When you're trying to be kind of a coach as a senior down coaching the young guys, what did Coach Mock do, stuff like that. So I always call on guys like that for sure. One final question, Ethan, for you. It was all over social media when you and your brother went head to head in practice. <laughs> And in the end, it was for a scholarship. He got a scholarship. Just take us through yeah. that whole plan. I saw you on ESPN yeah. explaining it. Pretty special. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the most, you know, it was one of the greatest days of my life, honestly. Uh, just me and Eli grew up together, you know, obviously being my brother. But we were very, very close, and we still are to this day. And uh, I knew and saw how hard he worked and how much it mattered to him. And, you know, I, I don't know 
sure people around here know, but he turned, you know, he turned down free, you know, scholarships to come try and play with me, and that meant a lot to me as a brother. Just that he wanted to, you know, like I said, he can't play football forever, and that's something that we had limited time to do. And he made that decision, and he worked his butt off every day. <clears throat> and uh, I didn't even know it was going to happen. So really? yeah, no, they I, somehow that they, they, it got, you know, told that to whoever we were talking to on ESPN that I did know, so I just kind of had to roll with it. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I didn't even know that it was going to happen. I was just ready to, you know, give them all I had. So uh, that was, you know, that was one of the, the best days in my, in, you know, almost, I would say life, I think, um, just to see how happy he was. And uh, yeah, then we went on, you know, Sports Center together, and that was really, really cool. So, you know, he earns everything that he's got. He never complains. And uh, he's a very, very hardworking kid. And, uh, you know, I love him to death, so, yeah. For, for those that didn't see it, just kind of explain what happened. Yeah, so we did this, we, every day in practice, we do this drill where it's called the circle of life. And the team circles up and the coach calls two people out and they just go and, I mean, hit each other and try and push one, one, one farther back than the other. I mean, Eli had done it numerous times and so he calls us out and I'm like, oh, here we go again. You know, I, I never, I didn't enjoy the drill because it's before practice and, you know, we're thinking about the, the two hours ahead, so. Uh, he let, lines us down, and you know the coach, Coach Jones, keeps pushing him back, pushing him back till we're probably five or six yards apart. And I'm like, well, one of, one of us is going to get a concussion or something here. So, you know, he blows the whistle and he blows it, like you know, he blows it dead. And then, uh, you know, I kind of like just get down on my knee and I like look up, and Eli's confused. Everyone's confused. And then he pulls out a paper and you know tells Eli that he, yeah, I got a scholarship. And you know, everybody surrounded him. Everyone was everyone was happy because not only did I think about Eli that way, everyone on the team, you know thought he deserved it, and uh, he sure did. So it was a very, very special moment. Awesome. Thanks for these guys for taking some time. Ethan Wolf, Joe Horn, Matt Barr.